yeah that's you're, you're on track like you got the right idea it's not it's not your um, it's not because it's a street glide yes uh, a street glide will let me just put it this way it'll enhance the weaknesses that are causing the issue does that make sense yes it does yeah it'll exaggerate the issues that are underlying. yeah but once the issues are fixed their ball are at 140 miles an hour that's kind of what I'm looking for yeah so we can fix that pretty easy so what the issue is is that when you're going down the road at 90 miles an hour and you start getting this wobble what it is is both wheels need to move at the same speed and the same rate to stay stable if you've got one wheel moving a lot easier than the other wheel then then the what happens is the frame starts to rock from front to back and that's what makes the handlebars go from left to right and that's what creates the speed wobble does that make sense Gyro? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. So that's what causes that. So what we do is we're going to put the correct spring rates in the bike, and then we have magic numbers for sag settings, which is just how much the suspension sags down when you sit on it, right? Okay. And then we actually put some real world-class valving in there, and all of a sudden, voila, this thing you can ride at one-handed at 120, 30 miles an hour on a street glide when everybody says it can't be done, and that's just straight bullshit. And we guarantee it or I'll buy it back from you. So right, right now, the suspension setup that I went with was the top-of-the-line progressive in the rear. And oh. up front, I just did their drop-in, their respring kit. Yeah. Um, and it helped, but it didn't, it, by far, it didn't cure it, put it that way. No, I understand. Um, and I, and I, can tell you, I can tell you right now, it's because of the spring rates are incorrect. Um, and being involved with suspension companies like I am with Olean's and that's all, all I who I deal with um, but I've dealt with the stuff that you have and I've tested it and what I found is the spring rates are incorrect and that's why you're getting the movement gotcha okay so now would I be dealing with front and rear uh, springs or would I be dealing with just the front how would I be going about this we, let's wait I don't know what your budget is is it is this something you want to get the best results for the least amount of money I'm not going to drop 20 grand on it, but uh, um, you know I understand it's not going to cost me a couple hundred bucks either to fix this. Right. So what we can do is we can do about a $2,000 deal. That'll fix your issue as far as your stability. It'll make the bike like what you saw in the video. And what that is is a $950 cartridge kit in front and an $850 pair of shocks in the rear. And that's going to cure your issue. Now, now would the front be the NIX-22? Is that what it is? That's correct. Okay. But it's the spring rate that we select to put in there, along with the sag, sag measurements that we're going to give you over the phone that I will give you and tell you where to set everything, including the valves, and then voila, magic. So we can do that. Now, the difference between that and an inverted front end is obviously $6,000 sort of thing, or $4,000. Um, okay. But with an inverted front end come better vet better benefits than a, a cartridge kit one being that the inverted front end comes with a 30 millimeter valve uh, the radial brakes are nice yeah and the radial brakes are incredible now just understand that brakes and suspension go hand in hand like yin and yang one yeah. can't uh, one can be great like the suspension can be great and then the brakes are great you can't have great brakes without great suspension because what gives you braking power is the traction between the tire and the road surface. What allows you to have good traction is the valving and the suspension. Okay, so you see all these guys running around with these big perimeter rotors and these big rotors and all this bullshit? It's, that's what it is, bullshit. Because think about this. You have a 200 mile an hour race bike that goes on the track. It only runs a 320 millimeter rotor. And it does 200 miles an hour and goes down to a stop almost or down to 60 miles an hour and back up to 200 over and over and over and over. And yet these guys want to put 15 inch rotors on a bike and they think they're doing something good. Just makes the wheel lock up quicker. That's all it does. Okay. Yeah. Now, now with that, do you also, you also run radial calipers that are different calipers. Obviously, you don't use the stock ones on this setup. Correct. Uh, with an inverted front end, we'll run uh, the big 30 millimeter valves, which give you great... Uh, traction of course under braking the dis stopping distance is like a third shorter that's a big deal it's a life-saving shit okay I, I went to uh i had swapped the stock over to the crown cut window uh ceramic brakes 
Uh huh. In just that, I noticed uh, quite a bit of a difference in, in stopping power. I was I was pretty happy with that. Sure, sure. So that, that's the deal there, um, and at very high speeds, the inverted is a lot better because you're getting better tire compliance, you're better braking. Um, the springs that are used in an inverter front end are no different than the springs that are used in a cartridge kit. Uh, the cartridge kit has a 22 millimeter valve, hence the word Nix 22. Um, and so there's a choice there, but as far as getting the best bang for your buck, the cartridge kit is the way to go, uh, just because it's so, in, so affordable. Uh, and gives such a tremendous improvement to the bike uh, in handling as well as braking. Um, but again, like I said, you can't beat the inverted front end for overall performance at the end of the day. I'm going to spank your ass if we're going through the mountains with an inverted front end because of the stopping power and the traction in cornering. Gotcha. Okay. Now, you also mentioned that the rear was a swap out uh, to the suspension in the rear also. Yeah, I, I mean, there's a dividing piston shock, which I like to push because it's only 850 bucks, and they work, it's still a gas charge. Stability to bike, and the valving that Orleans has in their shocks is really good. Um, they actually build their valving uh, for two up people on the touring models, so it is a little bit harsh when you're a solo rider. I do adjust those, and I um, uh, make them softer if you want that, uh, but right out of the box, it's like, incredibly stable and incredibly good shock uh and so when the i ordered the progressives originally they are the top of the line progressive but i question this coming from a background of uh, uh motocross supercross enduro riding we dialed in to the pound our suspension now when i ordered these they're like oh there's a regular duty and there's a heavy duty and that there was kind of nothing in between you know it wasn't uh, a specific uh spring rate so for the Olean Springs, you're telling me that it's actually based on weight, not just a regular duty, heavy duty. That, that's exactly right. So I'll give you an example, and, and you're really on the money here, okay? Because this is the issue I have with all the other suspension companies. Like, I'll have uh, Race Tech come in here, or Progressive, or Legends, and this is the deal. When we tune the suspension on a bike, we'll say, okay, uh, under if we get movement under power i mean like 100 miles an hour full throttle and the bike starts moving around we know the issues in the rear of the bike okay and not enough support from the spring itself so we'll go up in spring rate now for an example like an all in shock i can go from a say a 29 newton meter spring to a 30 newton meter spring to you know a 32 newton meter spring whereas all these other suspension companies it's like going from, say, a, a 10 Newton meter spring to 20 in one shot. There's nothing in between. It's like, how the fuck do you even dial in a bike like that? You can't. Yeah, which is what bothered me because I knew I was on the right track with something, but I didn't know how to fine tune it. You just kind of gave me the means to, uh, you, you definitely get a lot easier than talking about this. Yeah, I mean, I, and I constantly go and have springs made by other companies to set suspension on a bike. You know, not, not, not because I can't get what I, because I may go ahead and get some sprint, like Olin's makes a 39 millimeter cartridge kit, but they don't, they only make it for a Sportster, but they don't make it for an early diner or an FXR. So what I've done is I made the parts to make it fit, but then they don't make the spring rate for that size bike because they don't actually make an FXR kit. So I'll go get the, the correct springs made with the correct spring rate. And so, but I know all those things because of all the testing I've done. Sure, sure. Now, it, the difference between the drop-in, the NIX kit, versus a full inverted front end, mm -hmm. I, mean, do you, how, I mean, exactly, if you're not going full-out race, if you're just street racing, playing around bar hopper a, a little bit to the extreme on the street, is it worth, is it worth spending the extra nut on it, basically? I mean, well, that's is a good it question. that extra a few thousand dollars to do? It's a good question. And the answer is this, if you can afford an inverter front end, do it. If you can't, do the next best thing and get a cartridge kit. If I could afford an inverter front end, I would do it. If I can't afford it, I'm going to do a cartridge kit and it's going to ride as good, I mean, as in the stability department, it's going to be, you can still run 150 mile an hour if you want to go that fast. Um, but is it going to stop as quick? Is it going to be as, have as much traction in cornering? No, but it's still okay. damn good for what, you know what I'm saying? For my touring 
Yeah, for my street glide, I like to push it a little bit, but not extreme. Um, my Dyna, the project that I just took on, a 2011 Street Bob, with that, um, I'm probably definitely doing the inverted front end. Gotcha, um, yeah. Just because of the nature of the beast there. On the street glide, I want to kick back. I want to be able to haul ass when need be, but for the most part, it's my everyday driver. The Dyna, that thing comes out of the garage only to raise help. Right. Then, then, okay. then you already know the answer. That's that's good thinking, you know. Okay. All right. Excellent. Okay. So cartridge kit, toss the progressives, which sucks because I just bought them. Yeah. Sorry. And, uh, yeah. Well, hey, shit happens, you know. Unless you take things in on trade. <laughs> yeah. Well, we actually take them out of bikes here all the time. I actually give them away to people. Say, well, if you can't afford a cartridge, here's one that's for free, but it's not that. It's better than stock. Yeah. Yeah. Gotcha. <laughs> All right. So, okay, what, uh, what's your lead time on these suspension components? On the FKS212, which is uh, right now, I'm, uh, I was expecting them in today, but um, I'm waiting for a call back from Old Lens because they were supposed to air freight 40, 40 of them in, and I'm waiting for an answer literally right now today. Okay. All right. it, it could be as little as a week, uh, or it could be four weeks. I don't know yet. Okay, so you're saying the rears are 850, the front, if I'm mistaken, was about 8 and change by the time you're all said and done? The rear is 850, the front's 950, um, and then uh, with that being said, you're going to need to buy some fork tubes from Harley-Davidson, because uh, we're going to raise the front of that bike 2 inches. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. That's going to allow you to get round corners. It'll actually end up outperforming uh, your other bike. <laughs> Seriously. Uh-huh. Listen, we're going to do 13-inch shocks. How tall are you? Six foot. Perfect. We're going to do 14-inch shocks in the back, 13-inch shocks with a 1-inch extension, right? Okay. We're going to do 32-inch uh, front forks in the front. It's going to have a little bit of a lean on the kickstand, nothing crazy, but it's going to have a little bit of a lean on the kickstand, and that thing is going to be so stable, it'll, it'll actually uh, take you quite a while to get to the point where you drag floorboards. Okay, I got to, uh, okay, I'm going to have to look into this. So you, you do very interesting things here. Um, so my, my fork legs, I need lowers. Um, nope. Uh, how, how does this go as far as the fork leg? Am I restricted to Harley or is there other options? No, you can just stay with the stock fork legs you got. We're just going to change the upper tube, the tube that clamps into the triple trees. Okay, all right. That's it. And they're like 120 bucks each or something. Okay. You know, that's it. And then everything else is paid for with the 950 bucks. All you got to do is put it in your bike. What year is the bike? 15. Perfect. Okay. That's it. It's a 49 millimeter deal. Um, and what you're going to do is buy two Dyna Lowrider S fork tubes from Harley, right? And they're 100 bucks each or 120 or whatever the hell they are. And you're going to put, you can go get those yourself and I'll sell you everything else you need. You're going to put it on your bike, set it up. Uh, you're going to call me and I'm going to tell you how to set it up and then you're going to be all smiles. Okay, any, uh, do I have to extend anything as far as brakes are concerned? Anything no. like that? No. Nothing? Okay. No. Alrighty. Yeah. Okay, let me, uh, let me mow this over. Um, so total we're looking at about 2300 let's say by the time incidentals are done. Uh, 850 plus um, the 950 plus Call it 300. 2100 bucks. Okay. All right. Let me, and, and you're just saying totally different handle and bike. No, dude, I guarantee it. I'll buy all that shit back. Okay. All I'm right. serious. I'm not joking. I mean, I do this. I've got 30 of these kits sitting in front of me trying to ship out. Okay. And, and they're not buying them because me, they, uh, they think they're good. They're buying them because they've talked to people that have it. Sure, sure. Now, any of the four tubes, is it possible to swap those out to gold? You know, that only Absolutely, yes. Yes, the answer is yes. And then you can buy two-inch longer uh, fork covers, or you can leave the fork covers off and expose those gold fork tubes. And how much are you talking for the Olean's uh, gold fork tubes? Uh, I think Cycle Engineering sells them in drag specialties, and I think they're around 550 bucks somewhere in there. 
Okay. Yeah. All right, let me uh, let me figure this out, and we're gonna go from there. Sounds good, bro. Thank you very much. You bet. Talk to you soon. So there you have it. That's that's what I do all day long. I uh, talk to customers. I really enjoy talking to them because I can give them good information. I give them good information um, because I, I have it and I love to pass it on. Yeah. Um, because it just makes me feel good to help people and to help them. And I and don't get me wrong, I wasn't certainly wasn't trying to uh, talk yeah. down on anybody else's product. But I know the flaws in the other product. I know why it's not working. And well, it, you, that was a good point, brother, because they really do only offer two spring rates: uh, extra duty and normal. You and know. that's just not the way it is. Yeah. It's like offering two size shoes for everybody. <laughs> it's like fuck what? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Before we had that phone call, we were uh, we were kind of talking about the uh, the FXR, and then James uh, Jesse James had bought that one, and you had redid it to bagger suspension. And yeah. So. And and Jesse really appreciates stuff because Jesse's a. I mean, at the end of the day, you can um, think about Jesse James whatever you want to think about, but at the end of the day, Jesse James loves motorcycles. And is very very passionate about them, yeah. just like I am. So we really click when it comes to this stuff. You know what I mean? And that's all there is to it. There's nothing more than that. And because everybody in the whole world is different from each other, um, but we all have one thing in common. If you're in the motorcycle business, is that we love motorcycles. Yeah. That end of story. Yeah, that's what we were talking about earlier. We were talking about all the the behind the scenes industry shit that was circumstantial, you know, with the industry press, but. It, it really is just the fact that we all just like to jump on bikes and ride them, and that's what brought us all to this point of building businesses up and stuff, you know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. It's the only reason I'm in business, because I love motorcycles. It's not because I plan on getting rich and living in an ivory tower, all I can tell you that. For sure. <laughs> hey, honey, this is Chad. He's going to be bringing his tools in. Hey, Chad. Hey, nice to meet you, bro. Yeah. Uh, yeah, could you? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Thanks. I'll, I'll get with you in a bit. Yeah, that, that's that's one thing that I realize a lot, or I see a lot, is that when shops are very um, passionate about riding, they, you know, another thing I've, I've also kind of recently realized is that the more shops I'm seeing that are passionate about riding, the more you see things like suspension setups and and braking and and in their showrooms are for sale and and less like of the cosmetic stuff. You know what I mean? So yeah. It's, it's kind of. You know, because this stuff gives you positive or real feedback. Like when you put, uh, you know, eight-inch stretch bags on your bike, it, it diminishes the, the ability to ride it, and this makes it more possible. Yeah, we don't yeah. sell fucking D-rags. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know? I only give a shit about what's going to make that bike better. That's yeah. the only thing I really, honestly, I only care about what it's going to make it. I don't care what color it is. Yeah. I, I don't care if you want red rotors with blue buttons. I mean, yes, I'll do it for you. Yes, that's what I'm here for. But that's not my focus. My yeah. focus is always about how good can I make that bike ride? Because even though the guy may want to have those red rotors and blue buttons, because it makes him feel good when he's sitting there looking at his bike, and I, I get that, and I am respectful of that, but by the same token, I want him to get on that bike and like pee on himself how good it is, yeah. and that he can jet down the road at any speed, split a car at 110 mile an hour, and not feel like he's going to die or have it, you know, get the the yeah, diner exactly. wobble, you know. So well, that, that's 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 also cool. And you had said something earlier about how you know, hell, being right here close to the mountain and shit, you got some pretty nice roads you can go test these bikes on uh, pretty regularly. But you know, you had mentioned like you know, learning all the suspension, like like diving into that whole world of understanding all the stuff. You had a great analogy that was like learning how to play an instrument. You know what I mean? Yeah. I thought that was really cool. Yeah. Well, learning how to work on suspension, how to diagnose it, and to figure out what's needed where it's needed mm -hmm. is like learning to play music because it's, it's very complex because there's so many things that affect, like spring rate and sag measurements and valving and neck bearings and tire balancing and selection of tires and sidewall ratings and that type yeah. of thing. All that shit affects the handling of the bike, mm -hmm. including the knucklehead sitting on it, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> and how much horsepower he's got yeah. in that type of thing. Um, so with that being said, it was learning, like learning how to play music. And, and what happened when I did that first bike, I went to uh, a prominent suspension company and said, hey, this thing handles like shit, you know, what can I do? You know, and they oh yeah, we'll fix it, blah, 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 blah. Well, I went back there like freaking five times over five months. Mm -hmm. 
and they never got better. So I went to Old Lean's and I said, hey, I'm having this issue and da 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 da. And they actually sent me like a geometry sheet and said, well, do this geometry sheet. And then and then they, I sent the suspension in that had been done from somebody else to them and they said, well, we dyno tested it and it's cavitating and this is happening and that's happening. So they redid everything and sent it back to me. Bike was beautiful. I was like, fuck me. Yeah. This is who I'm using because the, the people I've been using or trying to use or trying to figure it out were straight bullshit. They were just running around in fucking circles. And I was like, what the fuck, man? Like, this ain't cool. Like, if I was, like... I'm in business, so I was like trying to figure it out so I could, you know, be a business, make a business out yeah. of it, uh, or build a bike, you know, build the titanium, which is what my original plan was. And then after I got into the suspension and figured out what was wrong and figured out how to do it, you know, and it took me time, believe me, it took me five years to actually get a grip and yeah. to actually understand suspension. It took me five years of, uh, you know, breaking eggs to be able to finally make omelets. Yeah. Um, and I had track tuners that were teaching me while I was going through that process. And when I finally got it, and it feels really good because that's the part where you, like the analogy of playing yeah. music. And now I'm singing songs, you know, sort of, <laughs> right? Um, and it's a really good feeling. And I love to pass that knowledge on yeah. to the customers and help them and actually really truly fix their issues. And they are so appreciative of that. And that Dude, I'd do it for fucking free if I didn't have to pay rent. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah. For real. That, that, I feel the same way about a lot of stuff we do. You know what I mean? Just, uh, you love being in love with doing this type of work and just being in the industry is good. It's good fun a lot. You know, it, it does get drained sometimes dealing with the uh, things that you have to make money for, like the rent, the, the bills, the this, the that. Well, you know, you yeah, know. that's just part of it. But, sure. you know, at the end of the day, it just feels so good to, to help people and, um, the only time it becomes frustrating when somebody doesn't want to listen to you or believe you and then you just, I don't harp on it, I just like, okay, yeah. Pretty yeah. much can't change your mind. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah, the, uh, what, do you, what do you think about the baggers themselves, like especially the new ones? Do you, would you say, you know, that they out of the box handle better than the FXRs or what, what do you think is a better platform, to be honest, you know? Uh, I, I like the baggers a lot. I like to, I, I don't care if it's an 05 bagger or a, or a 2019. Yeah. Uh, when I when I do my thing to them, I mean there's a 2005 over there that's going to run. Yeah, that's going to run a, you know, 160 plus miles. Sir, what was it? SNS 143. Was that V2 heads in there or V3 heads? In there? Yeah. So that's a one. That's a 160 horsepower motor, 160 foot pounds of torque with a Baker tranny and it's got the gearing. It's chain drive. Um, it will absolutely run 160 miles an hour. Will it do 170? Hey, going downhill, flapping my arms, maybe if you could flap your arms at that speed, but it will be stable and it yeah. will run that fast. Um, and that's and that's an 05 chassis, and everybody talks about, oh, the 05 chassis and the 2019 chassis. That's bullshit. All, the, the, chassis, the, the chassis are identical as far as their geometry. Um, what the difference is, is Harley's upgraded their suspension slightly. Yeah, because <laughs> there's about a ten dollar bill of material in their suspension. Yeah, uh, and when you pull their suspension apart, it's like, really? That's all that's in here? Mm -hmm. Okay, no wonder we got problems here, Houston. Yeah. Right? 